Praise the Lord, everyone. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. Uh, the scripture says, enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. And that's what we do on today. We enter in his gates with thanksgiving and we thank the Lord and we enter in his courts with praise. We magnify him and lift him up. Certainly, uh, we want to go before the Lord in prayer, but before we do that, I want to introduce myself, I'm Pastor Frank L. Quinn, Sr., uh, lead pastor here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, and our location is 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508, and we certainly do thank and praise God uh, that you're tuning in with us here on today as we lift up the name of Jesus and we uh, go through our Bible study on tonight. And we just want to uh, go before the Lord in prayer as we've already stated. We want to remember men and women and children everywhere the Lord will save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Um, also pray for uh, those that are suffering illnesses and going through in their bodies, both spiritual and natural. Also want to uh, pray for those that uh, are enduring this coronavirus and all others that are enduring the, the shut-in and the social distancing and so forth and such. Pray for our leaders that the Lord will give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding on how to uh, reopen our, our communities and our cities and our government. Uh, let us pray for our Bible study on tonight, that uh, the Lord will open up our minds and give us a word on tonight, a word of encouragement, a word of strength. So let every heart pray, oh gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for being a good God, for leading us and guiding us into all truth. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. We thank you for power. We thank you for grace. We ask you, Lord, that you open up our hearts and our understanding. Give us what we need, Lord, in this hour to strengthen us, to encourage our hearts, that we may make this journey and bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice, those that are tuning in and those that are yet to tune in. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them in a mighty way. Remember the body of Christ, men and women and children everywhere. Remember each and every prayer request. Father, we thank you, we praise you, give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord on today uh, once again. And I want to uh, welcome you to our Bible study. And uh, we do have a word from the Lord on today. Thank you, Lord. And the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And I can't, can't help but to look out and see that it's snowing. And um, I know that's God's business, so I won't say anything uh, negative about it, but you know, we just hope that spring springs and comes <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So I want you to uh, turn with me uh, to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter uh, number six. Hebrews, chapter number six. And um, tonight, uh, I know I haven't been doing it, uh, so to speak, uh, throughout our Bible study since we've uh, started uh, the online services of utilizing Bible study and and services such as that. Uh, but I want to uh, take you through some scriptures on tonight. Um, I want to help to uh, illustrate our study and help to encourage our hearts. So I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of Hebrews chapter number six. And the uh, our subject today is the certainty of God's promises. The certainty of God's promises. And 
It's important for us to know that God has made us, the Bible said, great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But God has uh, made so many promises in his word. Uh, one time I was um, excited about the promises of God, and I said, well, I'm going to search out the scriptures and find all the promises of God that uh, pertain unto me or pertain unto the body of Christ. And um, it was so many, I really, really had to give up my efforts because God has made so many promises uh, to us and God is faithful. The scripture says that God is not a man that he should lie uh, and no, the son of man that he should repent. And because of God's faithfulness, we can believe in and trust in all of his promises. In other words, the Bible says not one jot or one tittle will pass away till all of God's word will be fulfilled. And we can literally build our hopes and our dreams and have confidence in the promises that God has made. So that's what I want to talk to you tonight about the certainty of God's promises. And I want to uh, invite you to Hebrews as our foundational scripture. Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse 15. And that scripture says, And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. And that's our foundational scripture here on today. And that scripture is literally uh, talking about Abraham and uh, what Abraham obtained from God because he patiently endured. And I want to say this um, concerning uh, that particular scripture and uh, just to give us a little background information uh, that is going on, that, that really the thought, uh, the beginning of this particular chapter, it deals with, it deals with uh, a statement of maturity. It deals with a statement of leaving, uh, actually uh, 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 leaving the elementary teaching of the Word of God and going on to perfection. In other words, it literally starts uh, the thought that the writer in the book of Hebrews is bringing out. It begins uh, in chapter number 5, uh, verse number 8. And it's literally talking about Jesus and uh, he being a great high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And he's really trying to give the people or his audience an understanding about those scriptures or about his teaching of what he's saying in this particular letter, the letter of Hebrews. Uh, just bear with me, I'm just trying to lay a foundation. And in the particular scriptures, he's talking about Jesus. And uh, what he says about Jesus uh, and the, uh, the teaching is that, uh, that he wants people to pass uh, the elementary stage of, of the gospel or the doctrine of Christ and go on, move on to a more mature state, a more mature way of thinking. So he says in uh, Hebrews uh, chapter number five, I'm going to chapter number five, verse number eight to help us with this particular thought. It says, though he were a son, talking about Jesus, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Now notice, it's talking about Jesus, that Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered, what he went through. He learned how to obey the Father, obey the will of the Father, and he learned this also by suffering. So what I want to propose to you on tonight 
is um, if we can just hold that just for a moment and go over to the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians uh, chapter number two, Philippians chapter number two, and it's talking about Jesus and notice what it says, Philippians chapter number two, verse number five, let us, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found, notice, being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, if Jesus had to humble himself, we also have to humble ourselves. And notice it said, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. And uh, earlier we read in Hebrews chapter number five and verse number eight that he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Now I want to focus in on that word he learned. And Jesus learned obedience uh, through, the, uh, uh, through the study and the meditation of the word of God. Because it's in the word of God that, that had to be fulfilled. In other words, Jesus' life was literally written in the word of God. And he had to obey God's word in order to do the will of God. In other words, the will of God is the word of God. And Jesus had to study the word in order to be obedient. Same likewise with us. We have to learn how to be obedient and we learn how to be obedient through our study of the word of God. And uh, that's why Paul said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now notice, he said he learned obedience. So uh, he had to learn the word of God and then he learned obedience also through the things that he suffered. Uh, suffering has a, a way of teaching us uh, uh, the will of God. And for us, you and I, uh, not necessarily Jesus, but for us, you and I, God will initially send his word to us and uh, if we don't readily grasp that word or that uh, what he wants us to do, if we're not obedient to the word of God, uh, God will then cause uh, scenarios to happen whereby we have to humble ourselves to obey God's word. In other words, uh, initially he'll send us a word and that word he'll send us and he wants us to obey it. And then if we don't obey it and do what he says he for uh, that he wants us to do, then he will cause a scenario to happen in your life wherein you have to humble yourself and obey God's word. In other words, it's better to hear the word and obey it rather than entering into uh, some type of temptation or in or 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 situation or scenario, uh, losing some things or or falling short in some areas uh, to get you to obey God's word. God will do that uh, because God's your obedience to the word of God is important. Now I want to move on uh, back to uh, in the book of. Hebrews chapter number six. In Hebrews chapter number six, I said it, it literally, it begins with an admonition or a statement to get uh, uh, past, get past the elementary stage in the teachings of Jesus Christ. What the, a writer wants us to focus in on is getting past 
the elementary stage of the things that be of Christ Jesus. In other words, he says, therefore, that uh, Hebrews chapter number six, verse number one, he says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Let us go on to maturity. In other words, he's saying, advance to maturity and perfection. Uh, then he says, notice what he says. Uh, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and, and faith toward God. In other words, he's saying, let us stop saying that, that notice, verse number two of the doctrine of baptisms, the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead and uh, of eternal judgment. So what is he saying? He's saying this. He's saying, let us uh, grow in our hearts and our minds to mature that we get past uh, uh, laying down the foundation of dead works. Meaning this, uh, we should grow to a point where pastor or the Holy Ghost or Jesus Christ shouldn't have to tell you that sin is wrong. Shouldn't have to tell you to stop living a, a ungodly lifestyle. Um, in other words, basically saying that uh, if you're in kindergarten going to first grade, when you leave out of first grade, you should know that one plus one is two. You should know uh, your colors, what's red, what's blue, what's, what's green, what's black, what's brown, without anybody having to tell you those things or having to remind you of those basic elementary things. So what Paul is saying is, is that we should grow and mature so that uh, in, in the word of God so that um, uh, I don't have to be told uh, not to commit fornication. I don't have to be told that committing adultery is wrong. I don't have to be told that lying is wrong. Uh, uh, so that, so that, so that uh, those are basic things that are contained in the word of God. I should learn them and then move on to higher elementary, higher things that are in God. In other words, uh, I should leave uh, addition and subtraction, go on to algebra, go on to calculus, you know, go on to physics, things such as that. I should, I should move from the elementary things of whatsoever man soweth that shall he reap. I got that. I understand that. So I should move on. I should mature in my lifestyle so that, so that um, I can go on to things that are uh, not necessarily more important because those things are important, but go on to the deeper things that be of God so I can understand the promises of God. Uh, in the book of uh, Corinthians, in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter number uh, 13. Uh, Paul says this, Corinthians chapter uh, 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and, and verse number 11. Notice what he says. It says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. In other words, Paul was saying, we got to grow up. We got to grow up. If we're going to attain to the promises of God, I've got to stop childish ways of thinking. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Uh, you knew that I was a child uh, because of my words, my vocabulary wasn't developed. Uh, I, I understood as a child that that when you're a child, certain things get taken away from you, you go have a pity party, you pout, you cry. People talk about you, 
Uh, you take your basketball and, and go uh, and leave uh, and, and, and become easily offended. Paul is saying, grow up from those things. Well, when I was a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Uh, but then he said, when I became a man, when I, when I became an adult, I grew up. I grew up and I put away that childish way of thinking. We have to put away childish ways of thinking in order to attain the things that God wants us to attain. Now, I want to move on uh, because uh, in this particular chapter, uh, he's talking about stop uh, living a lifestyle of sin, embrace the, uh, 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 embrace the teachings of the baptisms, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of water. Understand those doctrines, the laying on of hands, understand uh, uh, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Now, these things are important, amen, but, but we should move on from these particular things to go on to perfection. Now, what uh, the scripture says in the uh, book of uh, Ephesians, I want you to go with me uh, to the book of Ephesians uh, chapter number four. And this is why we've got to be stay connected. This is why we need the body of Christ. Notice what he says, Ephesians chapter number four and verse number 11. And it says, and he gave some, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Who gave them? The Lord gave them. Hallelujah. Now notice verse number 12. For the perfecting of the saints. That means the maturity of the saints. For the saints can grow. For the, for the maturity of the saints. For the work of the ministry. So that when you grow, you should focus on your work of the ministry that God has given you. You should not be focused on uh, uh the, the old habits or the old lifestyle, that shouldn't consume your mind. You should grow and focus on the more excellent things that be of Christ Jesus. More or less, Lord, what do you have me to do? What, what do you need me to do? In other words, a, an immature person will never receive the deep things of God because they cannot be trusted. If you want to receive the deep things that be of God, God has to be able to trust you to, to be able to reveal them to you so that you will carry them out according to the will of God. Now notice, he said, um, verse number 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the building up of the body of Christ. Notice verse 13. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure and the stature. And the fullness of Christ. Wow. That we henceforth be no more children. Notice there it is. Children tossed to and fro. Uh, uh, to and fro. And carried about every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. So we ought to be able to grow up. Thank you, Lord. Be able to grow up and become serious in our walk with the Lord. Laying aside uh, those things that are juvenile, but maturing and growing in God, growing in Christ Jesus. The thing that God wants you to do in your life and your walk with him. He wants you to grow. He wants you to uh, uh, mature. The scripture says tribulation worketh patience. Patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shut abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. God wants you to grow and to 
experience the things that he has for you. And in order for you to grow and experience the things that he has for you, you have to be a mature individual. You've got to think correctly. You've got to walk correctly. You've got to talk correctly. You can't be as a child always stumbling over the elements of the word of God and never going on to the deep things of God. Now, I said that all to say this, that, that, that let's go to uh, the book, uh, back to Hebrews chapter number six. And I want you to drop down with me uh, to verse number nine. And we're going to tie all this in together with my last half hour. Uh, and verse number nine. And it says here, Hebrews 6 and 9, it says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and the things that accompany salvation, though, though, through, though we thus speak. Verse number 10, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. In other words, God is not, has not forgotten about the work that you do for him according to his name. God has not forgotten your labor of love. God sees everything that you do, and God has promised in his word that he will bless you according to how your deeds shall be. So when you work in labor for the Lord, the scripture says, be not weary in well-doing, for ye shall reap if you faint not. So notice then, verse number 11. He says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Now what Paul is saying here is, is that don't, don't fall by the wayside when you're going through trials and tribulations. Have a mature mind. See the end goal. Know that God is for you. And if God be for you, then who then can be against you? The certainty of God's promises. So notice then, in, 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 in verse number 12, that ye be not slowful, don't be slowful, uh, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Amen. So what he's saying is, Basically, what I said earlier, don't be weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. In other words, follow them that are written in the scriptures, that endured contradiction, that endured struggles, pains, and sorrows, so that they can obtain the promise. And a lot of people, uh, they don't know and understand what God's promises are concerning them. And that's why you've got to study the word. That's why you've got to study the scriptures to see what you're fighting for. See what you are uh, entitled to when you overcome your trials and your tribulations. Because there's no temptation, the Bible says, that has taken you but such as common to man. But your God is faithful. How many of you know that God is faithful? Your God is faithful. Who won't suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able? And anybody that knows that if you're in a temptation and that, and that temptation is orchestrated by God, God has made a way of escape. He has made an exit. Thank you, Lord. I preached one time, take the exit. If you're, if you're going through temptation, you're going through trials and tribulations, and God shows you the exit, take the exit. Hallelujah. So God has made a, a way of escape in every test and every trial that you go through so that, so, that, so that you can take that exit and that you might be able to bear it. 
Now, an immature person doesn't understand why I go through what I go through or why God allows me to, 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 to suffer trust and trials. Uh, immature people, they may say, well, Lord, you're being too hard on me. Lord, uh, this is too much of a struggle. Not really understanding or comprehending that, that God is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That God is setting you up for the next level. The Lord knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. And those are thoughts of peace in order to bring you to his expected end. When you grow and mature, you know you learn that, that God is not out to destroy me. That God is out to help me. And that God is trying to bring me to his expected end. And what do you mean by that, Pastor? That, that our will, when you grow and mature, you realize that your will doesn't matter. You realize that what only matters is the will of God. That the will of God be done in our lives. Because that is why we were created. That's why God has assigned us. That's why God has chosen us. Hallelujah. That's why God has blessed us. What, 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 what he was talking about earlier was the fact in, in Hebrews chapter number five was talking about the priesthood of Jesus. And in that he said that a priest is chosen among men for men pertaining to the things that be of God. And we can literally say that of ourselves, that, that we are uh, his church, his ecclesia, that he called us out of darkness to walk in his marvelous light. And, and he called us to, to, to be ministers of God pertaining to the things that be of God. In other words, God called us so that we can be his ministers to help somebody else. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And in order to do that, you've got to understand that you've been bought with a price and that you are not your own. If you, if you don't realize that, that God has a calling on your life, that God has uh, uh, given you great and precious promises, you, you, you give up, you throw in the towel, uh, not fully realizing that all that God has called into your life is working together for your good. Hallelujah. When you realize that God is for you, thank you, Lord, that God is not against you, that God has an expected end for you, you can endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You can keep your eye focused on the prize. Hallelujah. Not allow distractions to come to sway you off of uh, the things that be of God. A lot of people suffer attention deficit disorder. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and they have to take pills sometimes, medications, to help keep their focus. Well, I'm here to tell you that, that the Word of God and the Holy Ghost and, and those that focus in on God, hallelujah, they will obtain the promise. You don't want to be distracted by everything. You don't want to be uh, 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 taken away by everything that comes your way. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, especially uh, things that, that try to move you away from the steadfastness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. Uh, this disease, this coronavirus that's, that's hitting uh, uh, the world on today, this pandemic. Some people are, are, are going to look at this and say, well, uh, God is not able. But some people who are mature realize that this, this thing that God has allowed, it's going to make us stronger. That God is doing something, thank you Lord, to bring about his will and his purpose. And I'm going to endure to the end to see what my end is going to be. So they don't give up. They don't throw in the towel. They wait on the Lord. And while they're waiting on the Lord, they're of good courage to allow God to strengthen their heart. 
Hallelujah. You got to allow God to strengthen your mind, strengthen your spirit, strengthen your soul and body so that you'll be able to endure whatever comes your way. So, so, so in, in reading that then, our next, our next particular scripture, my God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad you tuned in. Notice, he says, that ye be not slowful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promise. Thank you, Lord. So you've got to use the Old Testament saints and you can use even New Testament saints and you can use even current day saints because the Bible says we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses as examples of them that have endured to receive the promise. Now, let's just go over here to Hebrews. Let's fast forward uh, to Hebrews chapter uh, number 11. Beautiful passage of scripture. Hall of Fame, faith folk, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God, Hebrews chapter 11, and, and, and this verse connects to that verse where we just read in Hebrews chapter number six. It says that ye be not slowful, uh, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promise. Now, I just read you Hebrews chapter 6. Now, go with me over to Hebrews chapter 11 and drop down with me to verse 17. Notice what it says. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he had received the promise. Let me read that again. And by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it, is, it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, according to that God was able to, accounting that God was able to rise him up from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. In other words, then, what he's saying is, is that use Abraham as an example, thank you, Lord, of, of faith and obedience. Uh, Abraham didn't always have this type of maturity, but through trials, through tribulation, through mishaps, he learned obedience just like Jesus through the things that he suffered. Abraham, he had a, uh, God had promised him that Sarah would have a child. Uh, they became impatient, went into Hagar, had a child by here, her, and, and he wanted that child to be the heir. God said, no, I've already told you that it's going to come through uh, Sarah. It was promised unto him. And, and Abraham, uh, he had to learn. Hallelujah, how to trust God. He had to learn how to believe God uh, to obtain his promises. And, and notice then, in, in Hebrews chapter, I'm talking about Romans, I'm sorry. Romans chapter number four. Y'all bear with me. Pastor Quinn get excited. He, Romans chapter number four and verse Number 20, notice, he said, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God, giving glory to God. Notice that scripture, Hebrews chapter number four and verse number 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God glory. And verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, 
God was able to perform it. Now notice. Abraham came to this point. He had to grow and mature to this point. He had to grow and mature to this particular status. Same likewise with us. You don't start out uh, trusting in God and believing in God and, and hoping in God to a level of maturity. Uh, you don't see babies being born grown, hair on their head, I mean, Lord have mercy, hair under their arms and, and, and a deep voice uh, and having mustaches and beards. They have to grow, thank you, Lord, and mature to that point. Go through stages in their life. My friend, you have to grow and mature and go through stages in your life, thank you, Lord, until God matures you and brings you to a level of maturity. Uh, what we have to do is realize this part that be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. In other words, you got to hang on in there. You got to endure the chastisement of the Lord. You have to endure tests and trials in order to grow and to mature. Wait on God. Allow God to take you through a process. But you have to be a student of the word of God. Be a student of, of, of learning from your tests and your trials. And, and don't buckle under the pressure. Abide until God helps you and to deliver you, to give you understanding, to give you wisdom and knowledge. God doesn't want you to be a novice all your life. Hallelujah. You don't want to keep going around the same circle all the time. You want to grow up. Thank you, Lord, and go around a different circle. You want to mature and allow God to bring you to a level where you can enjoy the blessings of the Lord, where you can enjoy the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. So uh, moving on, let me move on. I got 15 more minutes. Y'all just bear with me. Notice verse number 13. He says, For when God made promise unto Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, God swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Now notice, if we go over to the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter number 22. I'm talking about the certainty of God's promises. Genesis chapter 22. This is the chapter wherein Abraham had to offer up Isaac. Thank you, Lord. And no, notice what God had said after Abraham went through that process and he uh, uh, took out his knife and was getting ready to slay him on the altar. Notice uh, verse 16. He said, and God said, well, verse 15, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, verse 17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of all his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because notice verse 18 thou hast obeyed my voice because Abraham obeyed the voice of God his voice 
told him of his promises. God had already given Abraham this promise when he had changed his name from Abram to Abraham, that he was going to bless him and bless his seed. And Abraham believed God. Abraham trusted God. And because Abraham believed in the promises of God, he was obedient to the word of God. My friend, uh, God will establish his promises in your life if you are obedient to him. Let me say that again. God will establish the promises in your life, the promises that he has made if you are obedient to his word. My God, let me say that again. God will establish his promises in your life if you are obedient to his word. In other words, hallelujah, God has made a lot of promises unto us. God has given us a lot of promises, but the promises being fulfilled hinge upon your obedience to the word of God. Amen. I said earlier that, that, that God wants you to obey his word and God will send you a word verbally through the scriptures and tell you what he wants you to do. And then if you don't do it uh, as quickly as God would have you to do it, God will set up roadblocks. He'll set up tests and trials, not tempting you with evil, just to humble you to get you to do his will so that his promises that he promised you can be a, a surety in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God wants you to humble yourself, my God, so that his, his promises can be made manifest in your life. That's what the scripture means when it says Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And notice the promise. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. Hallelujah. When you, when you do what God has required you to do, my God, God will highly exalt you. God will bless you. My God. Hallelujah. And Jesus was blessed, the Bible says, and given a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess in the book of St. Uh, John St. John chapter number 15 Jesus says I am the vine and my father is the husband man he said every branch in me that bringeth forth fruit he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit and every branch that doesn't bear fruit he purges it and they are cut up in the bundles and burned in the fire. Everything that is connected to God is going to be purged. Amen. Hallelujah. You follow me? The, the branch that bears fruit is going to be purged. The branch that does not bear fruit is going to be purged by being cut off. The branch that bears fruit they're going to be, let me use a different word other than purge, but pruned. Amen. Hallelujah. God is going to prune your life. But, but if you abide in him, huh, you will bear much fruit. In other words, you don't have to worry about bearing fruit. God, the husband man, that's his job to bear fruit in your life, to produce fruit in your life. Your job is to abide. Your job is to remain. Hallelujah. My God. So you got to stay. You got to hang on in there to receive the promises of God. If you want to see the promises of God come true in your life, you've got to abide in him. Notice, if you abide in me and your, my words abide in you, uh, you can ask what you will and it shall be. There it is again, the word, the teaching, the word of God. My friend, we've got to get that word and hide it in our hearts 
Let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Now, we fool ourselves when we try to do what we want to do and think that the promises of God are going to be manifest in our lives. The way we get the promises of God being manifested in our lives is through our obedience to the word of God. Hallelujah. I think I, I beat that point uh, quite a bit, so I'm going to move on. My God. So let us go back over to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 6. We see here, notice, it says, for when, verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, huh, he swore by himself. Who's greater than God? Hallelujah. There's nobody greater than God. And uh, that promise was connected to uh, Genesis uh, chapter 22, verse 16 through 18, what we read in your hearing. When God could not swear by anybody greater, because there's nobody greater than God, God took it upon himself. He said, I swear by myself. Thank you, Lord. Don't it. Hallelujah. He said, I swear by myself, saying, surely, verse 14, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. My God, when we, when we abide in the Lord, and God has already made it plain that he wants to bless us, God wants to bless us exceedingly and abundantly. And the promises of God are certain. And those that have mature minds, they realize that what God has said, he cannot change and he cannot lie. So what God has said has to come to pass. My God. And that's where God wants us to mature too. He wants us to mature to the point where we believe him in any circumstance, in any situation. You can say in your heart, I believe God. And, and if God be for me, who then can be against me? Hallelujah. That's the maturity that Paul was saying uh, uh, in the book of Hebrews. That we've got to uh, mature ourselves wherein it, I'm not walking by sight, but I'm walking by faith. Hallelujah. Faith. I'm walking by faith, not by sight. I believe God's word. I trust in God's word. And what God has said, it doesn't matter the circumstance. Isaac, he, he, he figured that uh, 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 Isaac, God was able to raise him from the dead. Notice. I was thinking in my mind, God showed me in the scriptures that, that Isaac or Abraham have never seen God raise anybody from the dead. My God. But he believed that God was able to do it. Hallelujah. We might not see everything that, can, that God is able to do with our own eyes, but by faith we can believe God. By faith we can trust in God. He can do the impossible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's the certainty. Hallelujah of God's promises. Though he, God always into doing new things. God is always doing things that are exceeding and abundant. Hallelujah. God wants to do something new in your life that people would think is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All you got to do is abide. Hallelujah. In the word of God and God himself, he will supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All you got to do is stand still and wait on God. Hallelujah. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. My God, all you got to do is hold on. Hey, hallelujah. Until your change comes. And God will fulfill his will in your life. Hallelujah. If I was in church right now, I'd say clap your hands and give God a praise. Hallelujah. God cannot lie. Hey, come on, shot. 
God cannot lie. Thank you, Lord. And if God be for you, hallelujah, who then can be against you? All you got to do is mature in your thoughts. Wait on God. Quiet yourself. Hallelujah. Allow God to operate and move in your life. God is for you. God is not against you. My Lord, and the certainty of God's promises, he made it by an oath. Say, told Abraham, in blessing, I will bless thee. Now notice, I'm about to come to my conclusion. Uh, verse 17, it says, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. And my friend, you are the heirs of, of the promise. God swore that he would bless Abraham by promises and through his oath. He did that for us. He did that to show us that that he cannot lie. God blessed Abraham with Isaac. His body was dead. He didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Hallelujah. And God blessed him. You may be in a dead situation right now, but don't count yourself out. Hallelujah. You got to look to the hills from which cometh your help. Hallelujah. Know that your help is coming from the Lord. You may be in a dead situation right now, but don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. That's a God setup. That's a God setup. You got to allow God to operate in your life. Hallelujah. My God. A lot of people, they back is against the wall. Some people don't know when they're going to get some groceries. Some people don't know how they're going to pay the rent. Hallelujah. But you got to trust in God because God promised I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. Hallelujah. You got to trust in him. You got to trust in him. Hallelujah. Because God is able. Hey, glory. God is able. You got to tell yourself God is able. Ah, so he blessed Abraham. Thank you, Lord, for us. Notice what he said. He said, hallelujah. Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. In verse 15, and he says, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After you have patiently endured, Hallelujah. And that endurance means that you don't bow under the pressure. Hallelujah. That you don't give up your hope. Thank you, Lord. You make yourself, your hope steadfast. You make your hope a surety. And what's going to help you to abide? Hallelujah. Not buckle under the pressure by knowing the word of God. Hallelujah. By knowing his word. Thank you, Lord. By knowing his word. By knowing his word. That's what's going to cause you to be able to stand. And then you've got to add a measure of faith and be obedient to what God has said. Hallelujah. That's what's going to keep you. That's what's going to keep you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My God. That's what's going to cause you to be able to endure. Knowing the word of God. Be willing to go all the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because in his word, it gives you hope. In his word, he gives you patience. In his word, he gives you healing. In his word, you can speak his word and have faith in his word and things will come to pass. Hallelujah. You can have faith and speak to your condition, speak to your situation, speak to your mountain, speak to those things. Hallelujah. That seem to want to block you and stop you and trust God and endure and wait till God makes a move in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's the certainty of God's promises. Notice. Thank you, Lord. He says, when God, verse 16, for verse 16, it says, for man verily swore by the greater for an oath of confirmation is to them an end of strife for all. What he basically saying is when, when individuals swear by a greater, uh, uh, then, then, then they say, what I'm telling you is the truth. Notice, 
verse 6, 17. I got to quit. Where is God willing more abundantly to show up to the heirs of promise the immutability, <laughs> the immutability of his counsel? I confirmed it by an oath. Hallelujah. In other words, the immutability means the unchangeableness of God's counsel. Uh, what God has said, he's not a man that he should lie. It shall come to pass. Hallelujah. What God has said, you can build your hope on it. You can build your life on it. You can build your dreams on it. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass. What God has said, it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. Hallelujah, because this too shall pass. Thank you, Lord. God is going to bring forth his promises. God is going to bring forth his word. God is going to bring forth everything that is concerning you to pass. Hallelujah. Death can't stop it because God got to do it before you die. Hallelujah, because not one jot, not one tittle of the word of God shall pass away until all his word concerning you is fulfilled. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Notice, I got to quit. I'm trying to quit. Notice that by two immutable things, those two immutable things is God's promise and the oath that God has made with us. The promises and his oath. Those are the two immutable things. Uh, which, notice, which is impossible for God to lie. So that we might have a strong consolation. I don't just have any kind of consolation. I got a strong consolation. I got, we got a strong assurance. Hallelujah. Don't you know God? Hallelujah. He'll give uh, nations for you. Don't you know God will fight battles for you? Hey, hallelujah. God will move heaven and earth for you. Thank you, Lord, so that his word might be able to stand. Hey, glory. God will hold back the sun just so you can have enough daylight to accomplish your purpose for that day in your life. God will hold back the rain. Thank you, Lord, so that you can accomplish the things that you need to accomplish in your life. God will cause the devil to go under your feet just so you can accomplish that which you need to accomplish in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The certainty, the certainty of God's promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Notice, he said, Verse 19, uh, verse 18, that by two immutable things, which is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Hey, glory. Who have fled for refuge. Now, we fled for refuge in Jesus Christ. We left the world. Huh? They, the world was trying to kill us. Amen. But we found a hiding place. A shelter in the time of the storm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But I couldn't get away from the world quick enough over 30 years ago. I couldn't get away from the world quick enough because I needed Jesus. I fled for refuge. And now we're in the city of safety. Now we're in the ark of safety. My God, I'm not going to leave the ark. I'm not going to leave the city. Hallelujah. My God, we too close. Hey, glory. We too close. Hallelujah. Notice what he said. Hey, my God. Notice. Thank you, Lord, who have fled for refuge. Thank you, Lord, to lay hold on the hope. To lay hold upon the hope. We've left the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Goodbye, world. My Lord. And I fled for refuge so I can lay hold on that hope. My Lord, and this hope here is talking about eternal life. Hallelujah. God has promised us eternal life. My Lord, and I want to get that eternal life. That's the hope. Hallelujah. God didn't promise you a car. He didn't promise you a house, but he promised you eternal life. Hallelujah. My God. My 
my God. Hallelujah. So we got a hope to the end. We got a hope to the end. Thank you, Lord. Uh, what end? To the end of this world. This end of this world age. Hallelujah. We got a hope. Hallelujah. That lies beyond the grave. Now notice what he's saying. Thank you, Lord. Which hope we have as an anchor. <laughs> it's an anchor to the soul. And the anchor holds you steadfast. It keeps you unmovable. Hallelujah. An anchor to the soul. And that's Jesus Christ. He is our anchor. Hallelujah. The hope that is in him. Be sure and steadfast. And which endureth until, the, until uh, within the veil. Notice verse 20. Wherefore the forerunner is for us is entered even Jesus. Made even a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. My Lord, I thank God for this Bible study on today. The certainty of God's word. God's word is sure. God's word is steadfast. God's promises to us are an assurity. Hallelujah. You just got to abide. You just got to hope. You just got to grow your mind and trust in the Lord. Believe in his word. Trust in his promises. And God shall bring them to pass. Hallelujah. In our conclusion here. Endurance deals with you abiding under the pressure. And we have fled for refuge. And have, we can have that strong hope and encouragement. In other words, my friend, hey, glory, hallelujah, remain loyal to God and God will bless you. Remain loyal to God, hallelujah, be very loyal to him in word, in deed, in your actions. Don't sell out, don't give up, trust in the Lord. Remain loyal to him. Thank you, Lord. And God will bless you. Hallelujah. His promises are certain. And that's what Paul was trying to get us to see and understand when in the beginning of this particular chapter, he talking about leaving the principles of the doctrine. Amen. Uh, laying uh, 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 aside sin. You don't have to tell me that sin is wrong. I'm mature enough to know that sin is wrong. I'm mature enough to know that lying is wrong, that it's against God. Hallelujah. I know that, I know that those things will, 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 will cut off my promise. Hallelujah. You ain't got to tell me those things. Thank you, Lord. I believe in the baptism in Jesus' name. I believe in the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I don't have to be reminded and told of that. Hallelujah. The power that, that resides within. Hallelujah. But, but what I got to hold on to. Hey, glory. And what I got to study about are the promises of God. And, and Lord, I'm going to be faithful. Hey, glory. Are you going to be faithful? Are you going to be loyal to God? Hey, glory. We ought to make a declaration that I'm going to be loyal to God. I'm going to trust him. Hey, bo, bo, bo. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to believe in him. Because God is my rock. Hey, glory. That God is my salvation. Hey, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Don't be afraid of people. Don't be afraid of your assignment. Hallelujah. Allow God to be God in your life. Hey, hallelujah. God is looking for somebody to show himself strong. And you got to be like Joshua. He told Joshua, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, but keep your eye on the prize. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Hope. Hallelujah. Hold out to the end. Oh, glory. My friend, my God, I enjoyed this Bible study on today. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. It was like good medicine to my soul. Hallelujah. And I'm trusting in him. Thank you, Lord. My God. It's just like fire. Shut up in our bones. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord, I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the glory. I thank you for the power. I thank you for the strength and the grace that you have given unto us. Lord, I pray for those that are hearing this Bible study on tonight that they'll find the word, that they'll find the hope. Hallelujah, that they'll find the promises that you've made unto them. Lord, bless us that we'll lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Bless us, Lord, that we look unto you, Jesus, because you're the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we thank you. Hey, come on, shot. We thank you for the revelation. We thank you for the knowledge. We thank you for the understanding. Lord, manifest your will to us that we may complete it. Hallelujah, according to your word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, my friend. I want to say one more thing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that, that, that what we're going through, this, this crisis, if you allow me to say it, in every crisis, there's despair, but then there's also opportunity. And uh, a lot of people are recognizing and seeing that they have opportunity. They have this time to see, well, I haven't done it the way God wanted me to do it, but, but God has now given me another chance. God has set me down. God has shut down the city uh, to get our attention so that we can focus on him. Uh, a lot of people realize that we're in the last days in the end times, and they said a uh, time of foolishness and playing around is over. Uh, and that's mature thinking. That's a mature mind. An unmature person think, well, well, it's just shut down. It's going to open back up soon, so I'm just going to abide my time and wait till it open up uh, and, and not gain any wisdom, not gain any knowledge, not having an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. We need to ask God, Lord, what are you saying? Ah, Lord, what do you want me to change in my life? But when this opens back up, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be wiser. I truly believe with all my heart, hallelujah, that this persecution, what we're going through, is God is going to reap a harvest. Hallelujah. God is going to cause souls to come into the body of Christ. And we have to be ready. Hallelujah. We've got to be ready to receive them. We've got to be ready to pour into them. Hallelujah, my God. We've got to grow in the grace of God. The scripture says that we are helpers one to another. Thank you, Lord. This is the bonus feature that we're going through right now. <laughs> but we are helpers one to another. Thank you, Lord. The Lord laid it on my heart. He said, he said, as you are doing bench presses, you know, to build up your chest. Thank you, Lord. What's helping you to build up your chest? Your arms, hallelujah, they're pushing the weight to help build up your chest. What's going to help us to build up the, the uh, that's like uh, working with people. Thank you, Lord. If we're going to help people, other parts of the body, hallelujah, need to get into action to help that particular body part that you want to build up. In other words, we're helpers one to another. My God, we're helpers one to another. Thank you, Lord. Every joint supplies strength. I need you. You need me. I need you to get in position, and you need me to get in position. We need each other to be in position, to be ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because time is winding up. Jesus is soon to come. Get yourself ready. Hallelujah. Don't be playing around. No monkey business. Hallelujah. Get your eye on the prize. Press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Press. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Press your way. Hallelujah. Forgetting those things that are behind, reaching for those things that are before, and press. My Lord, press. Thank you, Lord. Press in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for the Bible study. Hallelujah. I've been done teaching for a while, but I'm excited. I'm excited. My God, am I excited. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. My Lord. And he put a hope down on the inside. Thank you, Lord. My God. This thing that has happened has caused me to tune in more on my prayer life. 
Hallelujah. I pray every day. Thank you, Lord. On my knees, crying out to the Lord when I come to the altar. Thank you, Lord. Those days that I don't make it to the altar, thank you, Lord. I'm praying in my mind, walking around, praying, seeking after God, reading and studying his word, being, getting myself encouraged, getting myself in position because I want God to use me. Hallelujah. Do you want God to use you? Hallelujah. That means you got to build yourself up. Hey, glory. You got to build yourself up. Get yourself ready for God to use you. My God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise God. I'm trying to close. I'm trying to quit. Thank you, Lord. Believe me, I'm trying. Thank you, Lord. My God, but there's something down on the inside. Hallelujah. That's telling me to go ahead. So I want you to be encouraged tonight. Be strengthened with all power. Be strengthened with all might. Thank you, Lord. And be encouraged. Because he that shall come, he will come, and he will not tarry. And realize tonight that God's promises to you are his certainty. The promises that God has made, he cannot lie. He swore by an oath and gave promises. Hallelujah. That what he has said, it shall come to pass. My Lord, all you've got to do is just abide in Jesus Christ. And you do that by uh, uh, letting his word abide in you. And then you can ask what you will. Oh, hallelujah. And it shall be. Hallelujah. God wants you. Hey, God wants to bless you. God wants to help you. So be encouraged, my friend. Tune me in on next week. Uh, tune me in, I'm sorry, on Sunday, Sunday morning at 9.30 for Sunday school. And then for our 11 o'clock worship. Hallelujah. And I pray. I pray that God keep you. That heaven smile upon you. Hallelujah. And that the fire of God be lit in your heart. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.